Okay, so when rendering, this is for my students, making sure you guys have good turntables that I'll be proud of. Uh, a couple things we want to look at. I want to make sure, first of all, that the background does not have that black gradient because when you compress the video file, that black gradient uh, gets banded and just doesn't look very good. So to fix things like that, go to Document, make sure your back color is set to something that you can get back. So if I'm going to do a number of turntables, I want them all to be consistent. I think this back color right here is good, so let's stick with that. Turn your range down. This is what it's usually set to. So slide that down to zero. Another thing I do is I'm going to go back in here and make sure that I've got a good canvas size. This is the render. I'm going to make sure it's whatever my demo reel is going to be. In this case, I'm going to say 1600 by 900. When you do change these, uh, so we want put this at 1920 by 1080 for just a moment here. It doesn't do anything until you hit resize. That's been a problem. So I hit resize and it's going to flatten my backdrop. I have to draw him back in here, hit edit, and then go to my layer and clear that. And now I've got this great uh, HD resolution shot here. If I go to double uh, a half I can see how big my guy is in my scene go back to actual and if I render this out it's gonna be a good size okay so that is the first part what I'm also gonna do here is I want to render a couple passes but I'm gonna start off doing the beauty pass and to do that a couple things I want to look at for my little compositing job in After Effects is I want to make sure I've got a good number of uh, things going on in here. So when I do a turntable, delete this one, I want to make sure I've got dock and large selected, otherwise it's going to pick up the ZBrush window and at half resolution. So now at large it's going to be my 1980 or 1920 by 1080. Modifiers, I want to come down here and make sure my cursor's at zero. Spin frames, we make this a 200, probably 250 would be a good number, but I think for the sake of my life, I'm going to stick with 200 uh, and make all my turntables the same. Unless I've got a long character or a car or a spaceship, I might need more, but this should be pretty good for him. Okay, I want to make sure I'm using a light source that I'm happy with, so uh, by default the light source is somewhere up top. I'm just pushing it off a little bit to the left so it gives it a little bit of direction. And I've also softened my shadows. This is going to take a second because I have softened them. But let's look at this. To play with the softness of shadows, we'll get into that as soon as this picture gets done. That's about what I think is going to look good for him. So to play with this, if I go to BPR Shadow, I can change the shadow strength. I think if I make that a little bit darker right now. Because it's still in this mode, this one will render pretty fast. Yeah, is that what I want? That's pretty nice. With the softness, that looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit less dark for the ears. So, And I can also change the floor strength. See what that looks like. That's better. I can see some of the detail in the ear now. Okay, so let's also do this. So what this starts off at usually in, Z or in a, yeah, ZBrush is one ray, zero angle, and the resolution is a little bit higher. And it renders pretty fast. It's not really doing too much, but I get a sharp shadow that looks okay, but it's not what I want. So for that softening effect, change the angle up, in this case somewhere around 13 look pretty good, the blur somewhere around here, give myself enough rays so that this thing is going to not be a banded shadow, Let's see what that looks like. So he's almost ready to do a turntable with. That's okay, it's got a little banding down here, but on the body where I care about it, that looks great. So, so what we're going to have to do now is 
if I'm going to do multiple turntables, I need to make sure that I've got a view that I can get back to. And to do that, I need to set a set my view up. But before I do that, I also want to make sure I've got, uh, you know, first of all, I need to make sure my grid's big enough to capture my shadow, and mine is. To change that, I would just adjust my grid size, bigger or smaller, so it captures the shadow. And then in here, I can also change the angle of view. So maybe I want it a little bit more. That's a 34 millimeter, a little more like what I would expect to see with my eye, I suppose, outside. I'm going to change my document back so I don't forget to. And is that 1600 by 900? Oh, and make sure I actually hit resize. Draw him back out. Okay, so he's about ready, except for what I really need to do is bookmark a view. I also want to make sure that is rotating about uh, a good location. He's rotating through his chest, and I think it looks, makes for a nice turntable. So I'm going to leave this, but if it's rotating too far off to like the back side of him or an awkward location, you're going to want to go ahead and move all the sub-tools using Transpose Master to a better location. Let's do this right here. Um, so the last thing I need to do is yeah, come into my document. And under this Zaplink properties, I can set a custom uh, bookmark view. So if I was tumbled over here, I can just click custom. It'll flop me right back to that view, which is the one I want to start all my turntables on. And now I just go to my movie preferences, doc large. I've got 200. Make sure overlay and title image it are turned off and once I've done that I want to hit render so I get my shadows and then I'll just go to my movie file and start my turntable great so movie turntable and I will meet you at the end of this All right, we're in After Effects, and I've just imported my three turntables, and they line up well. So, got those three turntables. Beauty Pass, my subdermal, and then a masking for it. And what we want to do is hide the mask for now. We might use it later on. And I need to somehow apply that mask to this layer. So if I just right mouse click in here, and I go to my what am I looking for? If I go to da -da 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 -da. channel box, yes, effect channel, set mat. Then under that I can change what I'm using to this surface mask. And what's going to happen, I change it from alpha channel to, say, luminous. Anywhere that was white or at least not black is going to show through. So as he tumbles around, that stuff is going to be what kind of pops. <laughs> and we could play around a little bit with how bright things are. Uh, play with the opacity. You could also, it is like Photoshop. I could right mouse click here, go to my blending mode, and I've got all the Photoshop plus a few extra. So we could play around, maybe try what a classic color dodge might do. Bring that back up and see. 
a little more time and see if there's a different blending mode that's nicer. Maybe the soft light, perhaps, no. That is interesting though. Or perhaps screen or color dodge. That's really bright. Really pops through everywhere. Let's try this one, but just dump this color down a ways. Okay. So normally I'd say that'd be enough. But you know, it's not real light coming through, but it's it gives me something that I couldn't get with a straight render in, in ZBrush. Let's go to the top up here and turn on this. We could try doing a few extra things. We could play with some of the blending modes in here and say, what if we wanted this to have a soft light? Ooh, that's really dark. Or, uh, maybe not overlay, but maybe, uh, Yeah, maybe if it's a screen or lighting, and then dim this way down. And that's color dodge too. Now oh, let's stick with that. Alright, that's going to take care of us for right now. Eventually all we have to do to get out of here, add this to the render queue, and then render it. And that is all.